All right, guys. Welcome to this live solve using Onshape to do some 3D modeling. And the model that we are going to attempt to create looks a little something like this. Latch hinge. So this is a model that we showed a couple of weeks ago on Model Monday Live. We also did a practice model of it. There were a few people in the comments who were asking how you would create this model. And I think the trick to this model, as always, I mean, you've heard me say this before, but it bears repeating, is examining the 2D print and starting to kind of unbuild the model in your brain into different features. So I'd say this rear section of the model is pretty straightforward. You got a circular boss here. It's going to go out in these two directions. You got this kind of bridging feature here that's going to go out in two directions from the center line. And you've got this uh, pocket here, which is also just a cut, you know, coming out from the center line or, you know, however you end up creating that. But a cut there again, kind of coming out from the center line. Now, how do we know these things are coming out from the center line? Just from this note here, center line symmetric. So whenever you have that center line symmetric, odds are that your origin is going to be somewhere along this line. And then we also see that there's a, a pretty busy area here along this center line. There's a lot of uh, shapes that could maybe be revolved about that center line. So that tells me that the origin is probably going to be right here. So figuring out where your origin is going to be a great challenge uh, before you start any 3D model when working from a 2D print. And so then the next area of this model that we kind of have to break down is what's going on in this area. And I think that this shape here, that there's like a lower ledge there and then this lower shape down here, that could either be done as extrusions or done as revolves. I think this shape here being conical, so you see this note here, conical surface, that's definitely going to need to be done as a, a revolve. I think that's going to be very important to get that one done as a revolve. And then you've got this 85 at widest point, and that kind of further... Um, indicates that this geometry should be sketched as a revolve so you know whether you do the, the these shapes here as as extrusions or do these shapes over here as a revolve it doesn't really matter the the, the thing that's important is that this cone shape here is almost certainly going to be sketched as a revolve cut so we're going to create all that solid geometry and then we're going to create the revolve cut and i think that's the other part of this challenge that is um, a little bit difficult for newer users is just recognizing that the order in which you create the features is is really going to have an impact on the final results and so you really need to have this circular boss created here running across the circular boss created here running across and then you're going to be able to do your cut revolve so make sure you get that that circular boss there in place first and then go through and do your cut revolve to get that conical surface. So now that we have established a basic game plan, let's use our snipping tool here and we're gonna grab a copy of this 2D print and we'll move that over onto our second screen. And now we're gonna attempt to create this using Onshape. So I'm gonna say create a new document. I'm gonna call this 24-04-16-latch base or latch hinge, excuse me. So if you have on shape, um, this is in the public documents space. You can just search for this document and then you'd be able to look at, you know, the model, look at the history sheet, make a copy of it into your document so that you can, you can use it. You can work with it also. So I think I'll start out here uh, on the front plane and I'm just going to create a, almost like an L shape that's going to get revolved. So this is certainly one way to do it. You know, you, you could, you could always, when you're you know, working in 3D CAD, you could always go in and create a layout of all the geometry and then use that layout later. And that's usually a, a solid plan as well. And that, that typically works pretty well. In this case, I'm just deciding to do it as um, one feature at a time. I guess you could call it like discrete features instead of doing a layout and, and including everything all together. And honestly, I've been doing a lot more with layout geometry. And so I, I would be tempted to do it that way. But I just kind of want to keep this a little bit simple in case it's a newer user. If you are a newer user, keep your sketches simple. Don't try to overcomplicate them. Don't try to put too much in. You can learn more about that a little later. But get the fundament fundamentals down, especially when it comes to like relationships in your sketches. And then you can move on to um, uh, layout sketches with all the features in one sketch is kind of like an advanced technique. So I'm going to start out with that kind of fundamental shape there on the front plane. And then I'm going to go to the right plane. So right plane, I'm going to create a new sketch here on the right plane. And I'll create that upper region. Looks like that upper region is right here uh, on this edge, kind of right at the center of this edge. And it's got a diameter of 45. So we could drop that right here on this edge. Um, we could do that as like a midpoint 
right on that edge. So shift M was a shortcut key that I used there. And then we could take this geometry and we could extrude this. We're gonna make this a mid plane extrusion. So it'll be blind with the symmetric option. And that's gonna go out to a depth of 160. So there's our second feature in that model. Now for our third feature in this model, we could create the kind of bridging section of this thing. So we're gonna end up with a circle up here with a diameter of 44. We're gonna end up with an arc coming off of that circle and coming down to kind of a tangency point down here. And that arc has a radius of 56. Nope, 56. And then we're gonna create another arc here that's gonna come down. Oh no, this one's actually just a straight line. So a straight line that's gonna come down, come back, touch the end point, come around here with an arc at the bottom here of 40. And then we're gonna come across with a horizontal line from there. And what I like to do in these scenarios is just kind of create some geometry that comes right over to the origin. So in other words, I would, I would end up having this point and this point created coincident to one another. I would end up having uh, this line here and this line here coincident or collinear. Um, these two are gonna be tangent, so I'm gonna pick these two and press T after I pick those two, pick this guy, pick this guy T to make those tangent. And uh, now it's just a matter of locking down the location of that center point. So the height to that center point here is gonna be 90. Uh, there's gonna be an angle out here on this line of 60. And then there's going to be a distance dimension from here over to this point of 125. And that should finish this. Did I miss? Maybe I missed a tangency relationship. I got the tangency there. Got the tangency there. Let's see. So if you can't figure out what's going on, try and grab a blue point. See if you can move it around a little. Okay. It looks like the thing that I'm missing here is the... What is it? Distance to tangency me or no? Oh, this isn't tangent. Okay. Pick those two tangents. There we go. That gets that locked in. And then this, and this tangent, maybe there we go. That gets that locked in and this, these guys should be tangent already, right? This and this. <laughs> All right, there we go. And that's kind of what I was talking about earlier, right? If your sketches, if you're struggling to add relationships in a sketch that's this simple, imagine how much more complicated it's going to be if you've got every single feature in the model sketched out. So keep your sketches simple when you can. Um, and then consider like massive layout sketches, a, a advanced technique that you can work towards. So now this is going to go out to a depth of um, let's see here, 20 millimeters. And that's going to, again, be symmetric. So that's basically like a mid plane in on shape. And then I'm going to show this sketch that I created earlier. And that way I can do another extrude, but this time I can pick that kind of internal region and bring that out to a depth of 40. And that one is going to be mid plane. So again, symmetric. And there we go. And then I could put a hole through here. So I'll pick this face. I'm going to go to the hole command in on shape. This is going to be a hole with a diameter of 25. So simple hole here with a diameter of 25. And then I'm going to use this option, select mate connector. So I can select that center point of the mate connector, um, which mate connectors is a term we use in on shape. Um, typically when we're in assemblies and we're mating components together, but it really just means like an inferenced location that exists on all edges and all faces. So like this edge here has a mate reference right at the center, the cylindrical edge or this planar face, the cylindrical edge. And then the cylinder itself also has mate references. This face up here has multiple mate references, one at the end, one in the middle, one at this end. So every edge and every face and on shape has a mate reference, just kind of like built in that you can select. So mate references, good quick way to locate holes in on shape. And so then we've got our uh, our through hole on this face here as well. So we could once again do a hole command and we could say this is going to be a simple hole with a diameter of 25. Oh, they were both 25. 25. And that's going to go to the location here at this mate reference. There we go. And that's going to be a through all. So that's those two holes. And then we could go to our... Um, I mean, we could do this from the front plane. A lot of times I try to match the section view. So we've got that section AA on the, on the drawing. So this way we can just kind of match up with that section view. So a line that comes over, a line that comes up, a line that comes up at an angle, a line that comes over, and then we'll close that thing off. And we can make that vertical. And this is going to be 85 at the peak. 85 at the peak. So we will... Sorry, let's get here to 
get kind of a perimeter of this edge here. Um, we're going to do that. We'll just do this using an intersection, I guess, uh, for the perimeter of this edge. There's probably a more elegant way to do that, but I'm just going to do it with an intersection. And then we're going to take this guy and this guy, make them coincident, and we're, that will give us the ability to create that 85 dimension. Now, this is radius, not diameter, so it'll be 85 over 2, so 85 slash 2. And then we're going to do the diameter down here for this hole as 33 over 2. Or we could draw the center line like we did earlier to get those double dimensions. And then this is going to be at an angle of 55 over 2. 5 over 2 for that cut conical. And then we'll do a revolve. This is going to be a revolve using the um, remove option. And then the revolve axis will be this edge here. And there we go. We can see on shape removing that material. Excellent, excellent. And then to finish this thing off, we just got to do this final pocket over here. So we'll pick this face, begin a sketch, and we're going to take this, this, and this, right? All three of those. And we're going to do an offset entities. And that's going to get offset to a distance of, that looks good, 12. And then we've got a line that comes up here and a line that comes over like so. And those are going to get dimensioned. So we got a dimension here from kind of like the origin to this location at 40. And we've got a dimension here to 10. And then we'll just make this coincident. You don't have to tidy these up like this. Let's say this one here, I was in a rush. So I just left that hanging out on, you know, over the edge. It's no problem. On shape knows what you're going for there. So you see it, it grabbed the perimeter that we wanted. So we could say remove and that's going to go through all. And then we just have to add a couple of fillets there. Radius eight, three places. So bring up that radius command there, eight. And that's going to be one, two, three places. And I think that does it for that model. I think the big lesson there in that model is just to remember to keep your sketches simple if you can. Even when you have a kind of a tricky looking shape, try to keep your sketches simple. That'll, that'll really help you out the most. And so we could do an edit appearance and make this look just like it does on the print. And then we could do an assigned material and we could say this is going to be out of 1060 aluminum. So from the TTT custom materials, TTT aluminum 1060. And then we could do a mass properties on this part and we can see that the mass, the answer that we're coming up with here is 1416 grams. So let me put that in the chat, 1416 grams. And then if we go back to our presentation let's see do we get it correct oh yeah we got it correct baby first try that's what i'm talking about so gg toby that's right yeah exactly rich you got it gg toby so that's uh that's the live solve on shape live solve for that challenge that latch hinge um, I think that is a, a good one, a good one to remind you that even when the part looks a little complicated, if you break it down into simple features, simple sketches, you're going to find that it'll come together pretty quickly. Just go sketch by sketch and get those sketches fully defined, and then you should be in good shape. So with that, we are uh, going to move on to the answer for your second challenge. But before we do, just a reminder to support the channel. We need your support. We appreciate your support. Like and subscribe share and reshare get the word out there